Hello everybody, Dr. Stephen Green here, and today we've got a really exciting topic, college admission, something that's on everybody's mind, right Cheryl? Absolutely. I'm here with Cheryl Delonso. This is the third time I've met with Cheryl. Yes. And I got to tell you, this is going to be a really good one. Cheryl and I, or really Cheryl, made the most popular video in this whole series. Yeah, very exciting, a YouTube sensation. YouTube sensation, and uh, today we're going to talk about college admissions, which is a, a big component of her life. But specifically, we're going to talk about a timeline. When do you start? What do you do at various checkpoints? Why do you do it? Who does it? How do you do it? When do you do it? Why do you do it? Where do you do it? Etc. All the questions. So this, uh, I'm Dr. Stephen Green from Make the Grade. This is the Business Success Series. I'm here with Cheryl Delonzo, and i got to tell you, I finally got an email right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I had some issue with it, but it is right there, cdbbcc at gmail.com. But Cheryl visits here from Ace College Advising, and uh, like me, Cheryl's based in southeast Pennsylvania, and she has worked with, uh, give me a number, hundreds, thousands, millions? Uh, I probably dealt with thousands of students throughout my yeah. uh, higher education career, so absolutely. So Cheryl, Cheryl has worked at universities and colleges and uh she has an excellent service that I've used personally for my own children uh, that helps children navigate the college admissions process, which isn't so simple anymore. No. So uh, we're going to talk about a timeline here. So basically, the way we split it up, there are six uh, time points, okay? So we're going to start ideally in the fall of your junior year, into the winter, into the spring, into the summer, late summer, and finally the fall of your senior year. So... Are we ready? We're ready. Let's All go. Right, here we go. So, Cheryl, tell me about it. <laughs> so, if you are a junior in high school and uh, you haven't started to think about college admissions, you probably should start immediately because during the fall semester, which has already passed because we're now in the winter of mm -hmm. the junior year, mm -hmm. some of the things you should be doing actively are getting tutored for your SATs, or ACT tests. And where would you recommend they do that? Well, they certainly could come see you. I highly recommend <laughs> yeah, Dr. Stephen un Green. Unsolicited I send, uh, testimony <laughs> there, yes. Send a lot of clients to you. Um, and it's a good time to at least take one SAT or ACT test, mm -hmm. at least to get a, a diagnosis there as to how well you'll do. And I believe you do offer... Um, those diagnostic tests to I, see, I those assessments, which would be a great opportunity for, for juniors to take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. I also recommend that uh, students who have never been on a college campus to at least make one visit. It could be something local. It doesn't have to be your dream school, but mm -hmm. to see what goes on on a college campus I think is important to get a feel. Even if it's a small school that you don't want to go to, at least walk around the campus and see what you think. Just to get a sense. Right. So in the fall of the junior year, this these are the three things that you should be so we're concentrating. Getting, we're getting now, they're also going to take the PSAT. Absolutely. And uh, if you have your score from the PSAT, please do bring that to Dr. Stephen oh, Green or right. whichever tutor you're using that's across right. the country so that they can see what you got. There you go. All right, so now we, we uh, transition into the winter. Now, there's right. a lot more going on. There is a lot more going this, on. This is kind of a little more of a high season. Right. right. So now we're in the winter season, and... You may have taken your SAT or, PIT or ACT by now, so you have mm -hmm. at least one score to take a look at. If you're going to retake that, I also recommend that you get tutored. Mm -hmm. I tell students, if you're not going to get tutored, I don't see the point of taking it again hmm. because the areas that you are weak in aren't going to get better just by you thinking they are. You need to have somebody give you strategies, work mm -hmm. with you on your weak points, and really kind of help get that moving. So the uh, putting the bed, uh, book under your pillow... Isn't going to work. Well, just... I've tried it. It never uh, works it out. <laughs> All right. The next, so, uh, the most important thing, though, in the winter, besides the tutoring in your SAT and ACT, is getting together a resume. Mm -hmm. I say this all the time. If you were going to go get a job, mm -hmm. you would have a resume. Your job as a student is to get into college. That's your job right now, and for that, you need a resume. Many, many schools are accepting and requesting and recommending that you send those resumes because it does highlight things that perhaps the applications aren't going to ask you. So mm -hmm. now's a good time to work on that. Right. I help okay. students to um, design their resume because they've never made a resume before. Let's face it. You know, a 17-year-old doesn't have a resume. So we can help get that together and work on that. If you can, again, 
make a couple of college visits this time perhaps to places that you are interested in mm -hmm. and uh, you know set time aside during maybe spring break President's Weekend. These are good opportunities when, in fact, colleges are still in session. Right. So you'll see students there and you can go make those visits. Mm -hmm. At this point, too, you should maybe have in mind some schools that you want to go to. And I would just make a list or, you know, write it out, a list of 15 to 20 schools um, that you might be thinking about going to. I can help you then narrow that down to the seven schools that you'll be applying to. And we can do that based on a variety of factors. But we should start out with a larger list. Sure. The other important thing you should be doing is thinking about who you want to write your recommendations. And Most you mean like teachers, professors? Teachers, right? coaches, mm -hmm. um, employers. These are the people that are going to be writing them for you. And it's important to think about this ahead of time because most teachers and coaches will only have a maximum number that they are willing to write, and that's mm -hmm. usually between 10 and 15. Okay. So if there is a particular popular teacher that you want, you should be thinking about it now. And in conjunction with your resume, you're going to be giving that teacher your resume in May so that they have a resume, and you've asked them personally to write the recommendation, and you've mm -hmm. done that all very professionally. So, so this, is, this is when the rubber starts to hit the road. It does. Okay. At least the, you know, the, the planning portion now, of In it. the middle of all this, it almost goes without saying, and it's not on the slide. you, you got to keep your grades straight. Well, yeah. I mean, you know. You, we're sort of assuming <laughs> that. We're assuming that you are, right. you are still studying, you're still right. doing your homework, you're still doing well in your classes, and that you're getting the help now, you now, need in those as well. Talk to me about the summer, because a lot of kids say, this is summer, I'm out of school, it's vacation, right. I just want to sit around the pool. Don't waste the summer between your junior and senior year. This is the best summer that you could be highlighting some of your strengths and mm -hmm. also improving on some of your weaknesses. So now's the time in the winter to plan that out. Are you going to volunteer? Have you never done volunteer work? Mm -hmm. It really doesn't matter where you volunteer as long as you have as long as you're going to enjoy it and get something out of it. If you want to volunteer at an animal shelter, do you want to volunteer at um you know, uh, at a facility for disabled people. Do you want to volunteer a food bank? A food bank? Exactly. Okay. It doesn't. Nobody. Nobody says oh, it has to be curing cancer. It okay. has to be something that you have a passion for that you would like to enjoy doing. Okay. Um, taking summer courses, whether that be in something that you're interested in or something that just showcases your ability to do college work. Now, where would you take these courses? So you could take them at your local community college. If there is a local four-year uh, university near your home, you certainly can do it there. Um, taking one course, you don't have to apply like a regular student would apply. You mm -hmm. certainly can just go and take one course. It might not even be for credit. Might not be for credit. It's, might it might be for credit, okay. depending on what we think is the best idea for you. Okay. Uh, and every student is different, but it does help to showcase your abilities. Now, now all these things, including the travel, are, are in a sense padding your resume. And absolutely. You know what? Okay. Students often, through their high schools, do some travel in the summer, which incorporates the volunteer work. Mm -hmm. um, so they get to spend, let's say, two weeks in, in an immersion situation, let's okay. say in Costa Rica, and maybe building a school or helping to play with kids that, you know, whatever. Whatever mm -hmm. those things are. Uh, so you go build a, a school for orphans in, in Belize. Right. Which is great for their community. Right. You get some personal experience. Exactly. Maybe even learn the language a little bit. Right. And uh, it helps you look look like a more rounded, right. well rounded person. Okay, so here they're gonna be busy. Yes. Now we hit the spring and, and I can tell you just from the tutoring side, this is really the heavy duty period. It is. School's in school's cranked up, you're in, in the high end of a lot of these classes, and they got all this jazz. Right. So again, as we keep saying on these previous slides, we have our ACT and SAT testing and our tutoring continuing That's on, right. depending on right. how many times right. you're going to do that. Which, yes. Um, during this time period, you're going to be choosing your senior year courses. And believe it or not, you still have to take the same rigor you've been taking all along. You mm -hmm. cannot... No basket weaving. No basket weaving for you. <laughs> you must take the same rigor in which you've showcased in the other three years of high school. Mm -hmm. So we want to talk about that with each individual client. Okay. At this point, you'll have your resume finished, and you can go with that resume to ask your teachers, coaches, employers Correct. for those recommendations. Important. The nice thing about the resume is, you know, your teacher might only know you from math class. Mm -hmm. They may 
not know that you volunteer at the kitty cottage every Saturday morning to, you know, help them. So this will help the teachers also write a more well-balanced recommendation for you. Which is critical. It is. Okay. Begin to narrow down the colleges to which you want to apply to those seven by either visiting or watching uh, videos online, requesting information, speaking to alumni, a lot of different ways. But we want to get that list to seven. Mm -hmm. And then the essay, and which then is the part essay. of the application. Right. right. So now is a good time that we can start to look at the essay topics for the common application in particular. Not writing the essay, it's too early to write them, but brainstorming and eliminating which topics would not be good. Now I can tell you something, and 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 for those of you out there in, in the in the world, that Cheryl's really giving you a lot of value here. And here's one of the many reasons. One is because a lot of kids I work with, including my own child, they're not even thinking about this. They're basically thinking, ah, when I'm a senior, I'll start getting my college right. uh, stuff together. And right. by then, in some cases, it's not too late completely, but you've missed the ball. On well, a what's hap what happens is if you wait on all this, not only do you have all of that to do, Plus, but you have all your schoolwork, all your But you couldn't have done the summer class. Right. And you, can't you, do some you can't do 50 hours of community service nope. when you start, an exactly. hour, you know, when you're doing it. So, okay, now it's the summer. Right. Early and, summer, what I advise... So you're out of school June, Right. Whatever. We're talking about, you know, early June mm -hmm. to, let's say, late July... Um, what I always have our students do is complete a paper version of the common application. Mm -hmm. We just print out whatever version is very, up there and helpful. print it out. Okay. One of the reasons is because there's information on there that the student is not going to know the answer to. They need to ask their parents. Mm -hmm. Better to do it without any pressure, get it all on paper, so when it's time to go online to complete the actual applications, mm -hmm. you have all the information. Absolutely. Now it's time to start your writing of the one common application essay. Which, by the way, is an entirely standalone video. Which it is, is which you can put the launch on here, here, right? I'll put the link in the comments. Absolutely. But it's a fabulous uh, video. Right, really so is. the common application essay usually has five choices. Mm -hmm. Student will choose one. By this point, they will have chosen their one and will get busy on that. Okay, um, More co college, visits. college visits if you can. Uh, and I also help students to become organized. It is impossible to go through this process without starting out as an organized person. Mm -hmm. So we talk about what it's going to take to be organized. I give students a checklist of things that they need to do before any applications get started because this becomes an octopus. And in order for the student to maintain control of all the pieces, they have to be organized. So there's timelines and then there's kind of timelines within the timelines. Exactly. And there's a lot of moving parts because you can't necessarily control when a teacher is going to get to a recommendation. Right. Okay, so now it's the end of the summer. Right. August a lot of applications 1st. go live August 1st. August 1st. Yep, big day. You know, I read an article the other day that said that July and August have become the new September. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. So <laughs> for for everything or just colleges or for a college admission. I didn't know there was an old September. Yes, my birthday's in September. There so you go. Just, so now your birthday's in two, July. Yeah, I didn't realize that. So okay. what's happened now? <laughs> so many students and parents and professionals like you and I yes. are encouraging students to do these things on a more timely basis. People are be beginning their college applications in on August 1st or in the beginning of August. They're mm -hmm. editing their essays and they're, again, continuing to make college visits or mm -hmm. revisits depending on the case. But because because probably what's happening is you start with 15, you come down to 7, uh, and then you're really going to say, what's my first choice? Right. And maybe you're going back to a college maybe for the second, even third time. Absolutely. You're going to see something different each time. Right. Okay. Well, we're getting there. So now this is really uh, right. So go here's time, the thing. Right? So you see here, we say that the target deadline's of October fifteenth. This is my arbitrary because you deadline. want people in there early. I want people want to be done. finished this right. process. Take the pressure off senior to, year. Right, because we still need them to concentrate on their high school courses. Mm -hmm. Because believe it or not, there are colleges that say. We don't really, we can't make a decision on you until we see your January grades. Midterms, so right. we need to keep students very focused on their high school courses. Mm -hmm. It's hard to do that when you have seven applications and essays and recommendations and so forth to complete. Mm -hmm. So we set a target deadline of October 15th for the application submissions. This, I want to just reiterate, this has nothing to do with 
early admission, early decision, that's a regular decision. It. That's this a is just an, it. An, that right. ace, your business yes. has decided it's just a good working date. Exactly. Get them in, get it done, get ahead of the curve. Exactly. And 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 the the, the what you haven't said yet, and I'll say for you is. You're also going to find out a lot earlier. You will, and in some so, cases. So you may you get yourself in. You may know by Thanksgiving. Well, you know, I, I always use this example of a student who applied to the University of Pittsburgh in August, and mm -hmm. before her senior year of high school even began, she had already been accepted. So she started right. her senior year with an acceptance under her belt. So there, it takes the pressure off. It does, off. takes it's, the pressure off. And uh, keep motivated. The, the, the senioritis is a real... Uh, it is. Real, you have to stay involved with your extracurricular <laughs> activities. Everything. You have to keep your grades up, following up with uh, the people who are writing your recommendations, uh, because don't forget, they're teachers. They're, mm -hmm. They have students that they have to teach. So you do want to gently remind them in a professional and nice way that, you know, your applications are in and that, you know, could they finish up. So I got to tell you, Cheryl is really good at what she does. Uh, and I can say that personally and, and professionally. This is how you get a hold of her. Yes. I'm going to I'm gonna flash back really quickly to this just to review. So we basically have six checkpoints. Uh, if you are a student or a parent or know somebody who's basically uh, coming into their junior year, this is time to have the conversation. Right. It's not the worst thing in the world if they start midway through their no, junior year. No, not at but all. But, you know, in, a, in an ideal situation in the right. fall, they should start thinking about it. There's not a lot to do but except for the SAT, mm -hmm. ACT stuff. Right. But as we move on, you don't want to let time go by without doing something. All right. Well, listen, uh, I encourage you to get a hold of Cheryl. Uh, first consultation is always free. Yes, absolutely. And uh, she's a wealth of information and she does great work. And, and we're going to do another video, which I'm going to encourage you to see, with, with some case studies of some things that, that have actually gone through her office and, and things. So very positive stuff. Here's how you get a hold of me, Steve Green. And uh, my number, 540-TEST, Philadelphia is 215 area code. My email, my web page, my Twitter, my Facebook, and my Instagram. Do you have an Instagram? Are I you don't have, do Instagram. Do I do a Facebook. Yet? No. Okay, so we'll get you on that one. <laughs> All right, so uh, Cheryl, any closing words here? No. It's, uh, it's always good to collaborate with Dr. Green. I think, uh, you know, students who see both of us definitely get mm -hmm. the most out of their uh, experiences. So here's the bottom line for this one. Early and often, get ahead of the curve, get professional counsel, and, and it's, it's going to pay off long. If, if, if you think about what you're investing in college, which even on the low end is high, is five figures. Right. Uh, and, and Cheryl's fee is reasonable. Uh, this is well, well worth the investment. Yep. So, all right. We'll Thank see you, you next time. Much. If you're an entrepreneur or business person, you're interested in having a chat like this, get a hold of me, and we will see you soon.